Hello everyone, it's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell. I appreciate it majorly. So I just want to try to review some of the uh, stuff that was talked about in the first day of the Amber Geiger trial yesterday. Opening statements. The main witness was her former partner and, and her somebody she had a uh, you know sexual relationship with or her, her lover too. And actually, they were texting before and talking immediately before and texting during the um, the actual incident. While she was on the 911 call with, you know, after shooting Botham Jean, she was texting her her former partner, you know, um, and saying, you know, I need you. I effed up. And prosecutors and the attorneys for the family, the Botham Jean family, definitely, you know, say that shows that she was more concerned about herself than, than Botham Jean. And they deleted those texts, both the partner and her, you know, days later, you know, deleted those. They were recovered. So they're, you know, um, but and I think they part of the reason they deleted them is because exactly that, because it, it makes it look like she, you know. I, I think because they deleted other texts before before the incident even happened where she they were sexting each other basically and she had spent sent uh, I think an explicit like Snapchat of photo of some part of her where she says want to touch and that's in this report but also they had a 16 minute conversation uh, you know over the phone where uh, when she was driving that caused her to actually pull over during the conversation to talk about it you know he was pressed her her former uh, partner, Martin Rivera, about that. Like, what did you talk about? And 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 he does, and he says it's hazy. He basically said he thinks it was about, um, to the best of my recollection, recollection, I remember asking about suspects to see if they ever confess, and I really don't remember a whole lot about the conversation Rivera said. So, uh, but the attorneys for the Botham Jean family definitely think that that conversation had has more significance and that it, whatever it was, it was important enough to cause her to pull over and that it may have had something to do with, you know, um, her state of mind when she, when she, when she went to Botham Jean's apartment, these kinds of, these kinds of, um, things that uh, various people, assertions, various people make, whether it's the attorneys for the, for the family, and it's obviously horrible or the prosecutors, you know, some, even the charge of murder, I just don't know how we get there. It's, it's, you know, there's not, um, there's a lot of, uh, sort of, I don't know, uh, inflammatory sort of accusations without exactly explicitly saying, what are you accusing, uh, the person of? I mean, I mean, basically, you know, the defense is saying she was exhausted. She went to the wrong apartment by accident. She worked a long shift and that, you know, she was more or less operating on, on autopilot. Whereas the, def uh, the prosecutors are saying that actually she was mostly desk work that day, that she wasn't. She, I mean, part of the reason they wanted to bring up these the phone conversation and the sexting is that, and supposedly they, they claim that, she had intended to meet up with him later that night, you know, rendezvous later, the two of them. He denies that, the, the partner does, but they're basically saying that she really wasn't that tired. And, and then, and he even, I don't know if the picture's here, he does, right there, there's the, the red carpet that everyone is emphasizing so much, the red carpet. And obviously that's, you know, it stands out. So you would think that she wouldn't, she wouldn't, she would recognize that it's not her place. But even the prosecutor, I mean, basically, I mean, it's just is like, what are you suggesting exactly by 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 emphasizing the red carpet? Are you suggesting that she knew it wasn't her apartment or that she should have known that it wasn't her apartment? And it's not real clear. Nobody's like getting specific because it's such a it's such a racially charged crime. And you have a white female police, police officer going into, uh, you know, a black man sitting in his own home and then ending up shooting and killing him. We all know exactly what, um, you know, what she's claiming, that it was just a mistake. But for me, I still don't really know, like, what, what, they're, what they're accusing her of. I mean, basically, you know, I guess they're saying that, I just don't know how, I do, no matter what, I don't know how you get to murder. I don't. I guess you, I, I can kind of see how you get to negligent homicide because they're saying, you know, she shouldn't have shot. 
or she should have, you know, she should have waited. She should have said, who are, you know, hands up or, you know, not just flat out blowing them away. Okay. And, and that I can actually, I could, you know, I think that's debatable, but I think, you know, you can make that case definitely. But so, I mean, at some point, the, the, the prosecutor, Hermes, argued that during her communications with her partner, Geiger became distracted and confused about where she was. In the last 10 minutes of Bo's life, Amber Geiger made a series of unreasonable errors and unreasonable decisions and unreasonable choices, the, coin, the kind of choices and decisions that only, only she could have stopped, Hermes said. You know, but I think he's choosing his words very carefully because you still don't exactly know what he's, what he's saying. So basically, if she had made reasonable errors, I mean, is that, is that what the law is? If she had made reasonable errors leading up to the event of him shooting him, her shooting him, then he, she would be not guilty of anything? I mean, I don't know. I mean, hopefully you understand what, I'm, where, what my confusion is. But so, you know, and it does say, it sounds like I'm defending her. I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just resisting everybody saying that she's guilty and that, you know, because it's a white cop, I mean, it's almost like we're doing the opposite of what normally happens, you know, like most people, a lot of times a black person is found guilty maybe because they're black, you know, and, uh, and, and, um, you know, now it's, it's like the justice will be if we just, if we do the opposite, you know, sort of, I'm sick of all of the, the race stuff, sort of. It's um, not a, po a good thing to say, but anyways. So Hermes, Hermes said the evidence would show that Geiger's, uh, Geiger's intrusion um, scared Gene, scared him, prompting him to get up off the couch, off his couch, and confront the stranger. But before he could take a few steps toward the door, Geiger was leveling her gun, having acquired her target, and firing twice, hitting Gene in the chest. He said that bolt ripped through Gene's heart. <sighs> Long in intestine before lodging in his lower back, and he pretty if she shot him right in the chest. I mean, it's it's so sad, but he he never had a chance. I mean, that's and but but he got up off the couch and and um I mean he even admits that um it scared her. I think it but uh, no Geiger's intrusion scared Jean and Jean got up and and moved towards her. You know, and it's just a, it's just the silhouette of a of a large man in what she thought was her apartment. It's, 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 I don't know. It's crazy. I, you know, I'm not defending her, even though it sounds like I am. I'm just saying, um, I've tried to think of this a couple of different ways. I mean, imagine, imagine he, imagine, imagine, imagine he made mistakes and went to her apartment. Okay. And she's in her own apartment and she shoots him. I don't know what happens then. I guess she, I mean, she wouldn't be at fault at all either. But, you know, but it wouldn't matter, like, whether it was unreasonable mistakes, unreasonable, you know, cause I don't know. I don't know. I've tried to look at this several ways to try to figure out. I just don't know. I don't know. So let me just stick to what they talked about. I think I pretty much told you. Most of it. So he was actually asked, you know, her her partner was asked if, um, you know, if she should have been on, she she, she should have been texting him while while Buff and Jean was um, was dying, and he said no, you know, and, and should she have been doing basically nothing but helping him, and he said that yes, you know, he did. So um, that's pretty much the extent of it for now. I'm so tired, and I got to get going. Keep following it. We'll see. Uh, she's going to take the stand. She's, so she's not. She's not going to sit out. She's going to take the stand at some point and speak. She, um, even though she's being charged with murder, so the jury will have to decide wh whether Geiger committed murder. But a lesser offense such as manslaughter or criminally ne negligent ho homicide or no crime at all. So the, the the jury does have the option to charge. You know, to to find her guilty of manslaughter or criminally negligent homicide. I assume. That's an escalating order: murder, manslaughter, criminally, criminally negligent, homicide. In terms of like, you know, what has the longer sentence? 
And, you know, I'm fairly certain that the majority of the people sitting on the jury um, are minorities. I want to say, like, uh, nearly all of them. Maybe all of them. That's the story there. Next, uh, I'll, I'll update. I'll make an updated video. I'm so tired. <sighs> Shoot. When it's uh, when there's more info. Thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. See you in the next video.